I'm bringing you my Honest Hades Town Touring Company review so that you still have time to see it in Nashville or whenever and wherever it's coming to your town. Hey friends, it's Sammy from The Sammy Cone Show and I've become known for some of my uh, honest but kind reviews, especially when it comes to movies and touring theater productions and this is gonna be no different. Now, if you watched my honest review of the Oklahoma touring show, uh, you know it was less than stellar, mostly because it caught me so off guard. And that's why I wanted to share what I did. Now with Hades Town, I've heard of the musical. I had never seen it and only knew a little bit of the backstory that it was basically kind of a, a Greek fable of sorts put to music. And so when we walked in, I just, I purposely tried to stay blind but really the atmosphere was different. From the moment that the lights went down, people were screaming, cheering. Uh, Hermes, the main character, walked out and people were just like beside themselves. Now, I think there's two reasons I later found out, but again, just the, the timber of the room was different. You could tell this almost had kind of a cult following, uh, almost like a rent. It had that atmosphere to it that was palpable. And what initially scared me was that this was still kind of a, a, a one room, if you will, a one set play. And Oklahoma was very much of the same thing and it did not work to its advantage. Uh, there was one moment in the second act where the walls kind of opened up and expanded a bit and then closed back again. So there was a little bit of a differentiation, um, but still it, the space was used so well. Uh, it, it was it was an enhancement, not a detriment. Plus, uh, the there was a six piece, technically seven piece, but six piece on stage band that was split on the two sides of the set. There was a cellist, a violinist, uh, and an incredible trombone player on one side. The keys player, who was also the musical director, uh, who was so talented, uh, guitar player, and I'm gonna forget. Oh my goodness, what was the last, uh, oh, bass player, excuse me, a bass player. Um, the music, let's just go there. The, and there was a drummer or a percussionist, uh, but they were behind stage. I've heard on the Broadway version that when the train, there's kind of like a, a, a front of a train that's on the set that opens up uh, when Hades comes out or when you kind of go back and forth to the underworld. And in the Broadway version, when those uh, that front opens up, uh, the percussionist is actually behind there so you can see them. But we didn't get to see the, the drummer until the very end. Uh, I really, I feel like I don't want to undermine by just saying drummer because I know there was other percussion going on. So percussionist, we'll keep it at that. Um, but to have the band on stage, um, really almost interacting with the characters was, was powerful. You got to see just how talented they were in addition to hearing it. Uh, the whole music, uh, sound had a, a really a jazz, New Orleans, uh, if my husband was talking, he'd give you a better, <laughs> a better description, I'm sure. But just a really cool, swingy vibe. Now, I'm not normally kind of a jazz girl or even kind of a New Orleans jazz girl, but um, it just had that energy to it uh, beyond just a traditional jazz feel. So obviously all original music. Now, I alluded to Hermes walking in. Hermes is played by... An, Listen, if you are a Sweet Home Alabama fan, you will know right away. I We were up in the, the tier, so I couldn't see his face, but I could just tell by his voice, the way he carried himself. Uh, if I say the line, do we know, Bo? Does that ring a bell? Well, Nathan Lee Graham, uh, who was Frederick, and I'm gonna forget his, his name, but he was um, Reese Witherspoon's uh, mentor. She was his protege in Sweet Home Alabama. Oh my gosh, he was, Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. The cast was just insanely talented. Now, uh, Hermes was really our kind of narrator throughout. And uh, yeah, it was just, just had such a cool vibe and the way he carried himself and his voice and it, uh, Nathan was incredible. So the real interesting part was the juxta juxtaposition between the two main characters, uh, Orpheus played by and now I'm gonna, Chibuzi Ihoma, he's a, a Nigerian actor, and I wanna make sure that's who played, yes. And then um, Hades, 
who was played by Matthew Patrick Quinn. Now, he, I really, I, I admit, I kind of stalked him after the show because I learned that he originated the voice of several Disney villains on Disney Cruise Line, including Scar, um, who else? Da, 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 da. Scar, Jaf Jafar, and Captain Hook. I mean, the base of this man's voice was otherworldly, again, pun intended. But Orpheus had... The, really carried out most of his songs almost in a falsetto. So to have the bass and then, I don't know if that's considered a high tenor, but it just was incredible. And then the lead female, well, there's two, Persephone, who was played that night by Lana Gordon, who I believe had just kind of jumped back into the role, was incredible. But then um, uh, Eurydice, excuse me here, was played by Hannah Whitley. And from her bio, she's like right out of college, acting school, musical review, training. Uh, again, forgive me for not having that right, but oh my goodness, she is going to be a star. Her voice was incredible. So if you've ever been to a show where sometimes you feel like, oh, uh, I'm getting like the backups to the backups to the backups, this was not the case. This was like power, power, star-packed punch. Um, and the story itself was so interesting. There's one song, um, well, there were a couple songs and I, I, I was scribbling notes. So forgive me. I want to make sure I, I write it down. They said, if, if no one takes too much, there will always be enough. Um, and then they, they were kind of saying they were, they were pouring drinks and I'm like, what a powerful statement just for society. And then they said, um, they cheers to the world we dream of and the world we're living in. And it, there was another song where the social commentary was like, I don't know when this was written, but it felt so relevant to what our world is going through today and the divisiveness uh, that we are fighting. It's just human to human. And so I just, it literally took my breath away at one moment to just step back and listen to the lyrics and think, why, why are we fighting over this? Why are we... Um, even arguing over some of the things we're arguing about. But so it's it's interesting to have something that, <laughs> I'll be honest, when I first heard Hades Town, I'm like, this sounds dark. This sounds like something I don't want to go to. And there are, I think, credit to the characters, the writing, the songs, um, the cast that really carried out these characters. It was so, uplifting might be a strong word, but it there was a lightness to it. Uh, there was a beauty to it, even though the majority of the set was in these kind of dark or muted earth tones. Uh, it just really was incredible. And like I said, you could tell that that the audience was so energized. We went on a Tuesday night, which was opening night here in Nashville. And you would not have known. You would have thought people were waiting um, for weeks to get tickets. And maybe they were. I don't know. But what I want, do want to say is that Hades Town is playing at TPAC. Can you see that it, here in Nashville, the Tennessee Performing Arts Center, through November 6th. And again, they're going to be going around the country. Uh, it is worth your time. It is worth your your money. And if you have the pleasure of seeing the same cast that we saw, let me see if I can um, do this. Yeah, one of the songs is called Why Build the Wall. I'll just leave it at that. But uh Here's the cast. You see Nathan Lee Graham up there again. Uh, and we had a couple substitutions, but really it was an incredible, incredible experience. So highly recommend it. Uh, and yeah, that's all I have to say. If you have any questions about it, leave a comment below. I'm happy to answer it. Uh, make sure you follow here uh, at the Sammy Cone Show on YouTube, on Instagram to get updated on my latest reviews, especially as we go into award season. Okay, friends, have a great day. Make sure you make it great and do not wait to tell someone you love how you feel about them. Bye, friends.